In this video, we will show you how to design an all-in-one implant bridge. Start with creating a new order. Mark the teeth you're going to work on and select Screw Retained Crown. Select your material of choice. In our case, we're choosing zirconia. Remember to choose the right type of implant system and kit. While scanning, always use a corresponding scan flag, which must be screwed into the model. Then choose the teeth for pontics and choose Anatomy Pontic from the indications list. Also remember to select the material of your choice. The last step of the order creation is to add gingiva. Once your model has been scanned, you'll start from placing the occlusal plane while being in the prepare step. You can also sculpt models if necessary. When done, click Next to move further. In the segmentation step, place the annotations, keeping in mind that they should always be placed on the buccal side of the gum near the margin. If an annotation has been placed during the scanning, you can always move it. Just click and drag or select the clear button and place it again. Then click Next to move to the insertion direction step. In the implant bridge restoration type, screw retain crowns are grouped and have one insertion line for the restoration. An optimal direction will be calculated by the software, but you can modify it at this step. If it is moved too far for abutments, the software will notify you with a red vector and a callout. Once the insertion direction has been set, click Next. In the Anatomy pre-design step, the software will generate an initial suggestion for teeth placement. The Smile Composer's Smile Library allows you to change the teeth anatomy and the Sculpt tools give you the possibility to change the placement in relation to the jaw anatomy, other teeth in the arch and antagonists if available. Having the teeth positioned, click Next to move to the abutment step. At this design stage, you can shape the emergence profiles of each bridge abutment. It is easily done on the translucent models due to the visible contour lines. Start with positioning the control points of the emergence profile at the required level in relation to the gum edge, usually about one millimeter below the gingiva level. When activated, the points show the grid mesh, which helps to measure distances. When you have it at the required level and your emergence profile has been formed by a healing cap, click the Snap Gingiva button. This will fit the emergence profile completely. However, if you do not have a nicely shaped emergence profile, use the Snap to Anatomy button to automatically snap the profile to the earlier designed crown. Clicking Preview will allow you to see the crown's connection to the emergence profile. After finishing the emergence profile design, Click Next to go to the Anatomy Design step. Now you have the teeth anatomy back and you can work on them adjusting the shape, contact points and occlusion. For this, you can use all the available tools in the Sculpt Toolkit. When done, click Next to get to the Gingiva Design step. Select Draw Artificial Gingiva Outline and then use the pencil icon to draw the Gingiva Outline that can be modified if needed. When the gingiva is outlined, make sure that you draw the openings for all of the implants. It's important to do so because those openings are needed for ensuring that the implants go well inside the gingiva. Click on the Draw Implant Openings in Artificial Gingiva button and draw the lines around all the implants. Optionally, you can draw relief zones using the Draw Relief Zone button, if necessary. All settings related to Gingiva can be set in the Materials Settings drop-down menu. Check the design and edit it if you need, simply repositioning the control points. Once all outlines are created, click Next to move to the Sculpt step, where you can use the Sculpt tools to shape the Gingiva. Click Next when finished. In the Gingiva Reduction step, you have a few options for Gingiva customization like Keep Anatomy, to save anatomy for the current tooth. Top Cup allows to design the top cup of an abutment with the provided configurations. It is a customized design using the control points. This option is useful for crowns which go on top. And lastly, Cutback 
allows to design the reduced part of the bridge using the anatomical offset mechanism. It is a customized design using the spline. This option is useful for hand veneering or for creating facial reduction. When ready, go to the next step, which is finalize. At the finalized step, the teeth and gingiva are combined. It gives you the chance to adjust the whole design at the same time. Use the Sculpt Toolkit tools to do that. Once the modification of your design is finished, go to the Assembly step by clicking Next, where the bridge and the abutments will be combined, and screw holes will be created. Angulation of the screw holes is possible at this step. You can also modify the assembly settings here. When ready, click Next and go to the Save step and close the case. You will get a pop-up message after closing the case. If you need to design immediate crowns on top of the implant bridge, choose Yes. The new order form will appear. Crowns will be automatically created on each tooth, based on the primary order form. But it can still be modified if you want to have, for example, the veneering on the anterior teeth and crowns on the posteriors. The material can also be changed. While in Dental Designer, the annotations, margin lines, insertion direction will be taken from the previous design, so you can leave it as it is or make some modifications. Design of the anatomy will be automatically taken from the previous design, so again, you can leave it as it is or make some changes. Click Next to move to the final step and save the case. You have now learned how to design an all-in-one implant bridge. To learn more, we do recommend watching other videos suggested in the description box. We hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.